So piston yeah. rings are made out of what type of material usually from the factory? Steel. steel? What kind of steel? Alloy. Mm, that was Hardened. a type of metal. Right, yeah. Other than a mixture. Cast iron. <coughs> cast iron. Piston rings are typically cast rings. Uh, means that they seat really well. They tend not to take a long time to seal up against the bore. When a bore is freshly machined, okay, it takes a while for this ring to seat. Kind of like brake pads seat on a new rotor. It takes 30 brakes at 30 mile an hour in order for those pads to get seated. Well, the harder the ring is, the longer it takes for that ring to seat. And in the meantime, you burn oil. Which means when you burn oil, you're damaging catalytic converters, all sorts of things, wearing emissions, okay? So we can't, we can't afford that. So typically cast rings are what's gonna come from the factory. It seats to the cylinder extremely fast. The downside is cast rings do wear out, okay? So there is a downside to cast rings. You'll see that this is what we call our ring end gap right here. Um, this, is, uh, this is the ring end gap. These pliers, they kind of have little little grooves, little wedges. We're gonna put the ring end gap in those wedges, and then we're gonna expand the ring out. So we put it in place here. We start to expand the ring. And what I wanna do is I wanna get the ring just expanded enough. Notice how I'm keeping the, the ring end gap tight against the piston there. Just enough to get the ring off. I go further than that and this ring will shatter. It's cast iron. Okay, so pieces will go flying. And the harder this ring is, or more brittle it is, because it's older, it's been heated, typically they break when they come off. All right, so just be kind of aware of that. Is that bad when they break? Like, it means they, that they've been... Them off, even if you're not gonna use them again, or whatever. Yeah, it's not bad, it just shows you that they've been worn that much. They've, they've been heated up, and they're that brittle. Rings can break in the engine. <clears throat> Okay. Just the pressure of the gases on the ring itself, it can actually snap and break. Sometimes it'll stay in its, in its ring land, and other times it won't. Okay? Bad. Mm -hmm. That's bad. Yep. And then all of a sudden you got chunks of ring that's trying to go out of the valve, the exhaust valve. Okay. Yep. And that usually makes noise. Okay? And you lose compression and power. So again, this is our top compression ring. Um, we can test ring side clearance so we can do ring side clearance which we'll look at tomorrow but right now when we remove a ring there is a certain way that this ring goes on too okay so it didn't go on this way it actually has to go on this way it can't go on this way it has to go on this way it can go on this way but it cannot go this way <laughs> now you're confused right there's a dot right here Mm. Dots face up. Unless, unless your manufacturer tells you otherwise. The dot here faces up. If you look on the other side of this ring, there's no dot. No dot. Okay. So dot faces up. So it has to go on this Can one. you reuse rings? Can you reuse rings? Yes, you can. Should you? No, you should no. not. <laughs> nope. Nope. If you're tearing an engine down this far, you will replace the rings. You'd be very wise to do so. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be worth that. Yeah. At least a simple mm -hmm. thing. A set of rings might run you 50 bucks. Okay? So, in the grand scheme of everything that you're doing, it's worth it's pretty cheap. Just spend 50 mm -hmm. bucks. Yep. Now, 50 bucks, I know, doesn't it's not cheap, but it's, it's something you'd want to do. Yeah. Correct. So, now what we've done is we've gotten our top compression ring out of our land and, uh, we're actually gonna take a set of what we call feeler gauges. And feeler gauges are just machined pieces of steel or stamped pieces of precisely um, stamped steel. And they have measurements on them, all right? So you've probably used them before um, or you've seen them before or you've heard of them before. Uh, a lot of people uh, use them for spark plug gapping, but we're gonna use them for various things in engines. Um, all of these have measurements on them, all right? So if you look on them, they have, for this one, it is 
1.06 millimeter. It also has inches up top here. This one is 0 0.0025, so two and a half thousandths, okay? Um, but they're all different sizes, all the way down to one thousandth of an inch maybe. Now the smallest ours goes is 0 0.0015, so a thousandth and a half, okay? It doesn't go quite down to a thousandth. The thinner that the steel gets, it'll often go into brass material, okay? Um, and you can't always use steel. Sometimes you need brass, sometimes you need plastic ones, uh, depending on whether you're in pieces that are magnetic. All right, so you kind of have to be careful with that. But these are precision machine. This one, 0.003 thousandths. So that's three thousandths of an inch. So if I were to measure a gap, my gap would be three thousandths of an inch. So why did we have to do that addition this morning for the TCA, right? Here's why. I need to know what size ring to purchase. Now, some of you, when you buy pistons, and you won't know, or some of you that have pistons, you don't know what rings you need. What size is that gap? One way that we can do this is we can add multiple feeler gauges together and figure out what our gap is. Then we take and we add all these numbers up, 0 0.025, 0 0.026, 0 0.028, and we figure out what our decimal is. Now the thing is, they don't sell rings in decimal form. Fractions. They're fractions. <coughs> so you gotta take your decimal and you gotta convert it to a fraction. So here, let's, let's go ahead and let's kind of go through this this morning. What I'm gonna do is get us kind of close. Okay. There's two that are close, but I got a little bit of play there. It's pretty easy, okay? I should have a slight drag, and it's, it's got a pretty easy gap there. So I'm pretty close. I got a 2.6 and I got a 2.8, but now I need to get down something really, really fine. So I'm gonna bring out my, without ripping it, because the steel can rip. I'm gonna bring out my 2,000. Slip the two thousandths in there, and it's still pretty easy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go. Actually, I'm gonna step right up to three thousandths. My three thousandths. And it's still a little easy. So let's see. I'm gonna go to four thousandths. starting to get starting to get pretty close right there I'd say I'm pretty close to where I need to be okay so I'm gonna take these four thousandths twenty six thousandths and twenty eight thousandths I need to add those three up okay and then let's find a fraction so let's go ahead and do that everybody go back to your group grab your scrap piece of paper whatever you worked with this morning <clears throat> 